Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX, the place where I teach you all the tips and techniques for creating your very own animations and video effects. So welcome to the first video in our Star Wars series. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down one of the most iconic Star Wars effects, the Stormtrooper Blast Effect. Now I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one, so if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. So let's jump in and get started. Now just before we get started, I recommend checking out our little Star Wars fan film, and I've linked to that in the description below. Now I've also added a slider running along the bottom of this video to help you if you want to skip ahead in this tutorial. Now all the material I'm going to be showing you in this video is also available to download absolutely free and I've also linked to that in the description below. Now the first section, which is really just as important as making the actual effect, is how we actually shot it. Now what we actually did was we got our actors to stand there and then on cue they would raise their weapons and pretend to fire. Now that pretending action of that recall really helps sell this effect and it's really important that you do something similar if you're shooting your own little fan film. Now to complete this tutorial, you're actually going to need to download a free plugin called Saber from Video Copilot. And I've linked to that in the description below as well. And all you need to do is just basically go to their website and then just download it for either Windows or Apple, and then just install it into your After Effects. And when you restart, it'll be ready to use. Now there's actually a few ways to actually do this blaster effect, but I find that this way actually was probably the most authentic plus it saved a heap of time. And that's really what is most important to me is saving as much time as possible. So now jumping over to After Effects, I've now downloaded those files and you'll notice that I've included two clips plus this muzzle flash image. And I've also included the blaster sound effect, which you can add in to your final export. Now, if you wanna use your own footage, that's absolutely fine. Just import that footage and then we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is grab my clip one here and I'm gonna right click and then just say new comp from selection. So we've now got our composition here. So the first thing we need to do is actually find where the gun is actually being shot. So in this case, it looks to be about here. Then we're just gonna come up here, grab that muzzle flash image and just drag that straight in. And then what we need to do is actually come over to the modes here. If your modes is in there, just right click Go to columns and make sure modes is selected and then just change this to screen and that's just going to help sell this muzzle flash and what i can do is actually just scale this down to the appropriate size here to something like this the other thing i'm going to do is just make this a 3d layer and what that will actually allow us to do is to come up here to our rotation tool and actually rotate this around on the different axes to actually line up with our gun. So we kind of get something that looks like that. Now obviously the muzzle flash, we only want it to appear for maybe two frames. So what I'm actually gonna do is drag the start of this muzzle flash here, and I'm gonna come down here and create a transform scale property and create a keyframe there. Then what I actually need to do is move the anchor point. So I can use my pan behind tool or hitting Y on the keyboard, I'm just gonna drag this so it lines up with the back of my muzzle flash here, but basically right on the edge of where my gun is. And when I go across to the next frame, you'll see that when I actually scale this down, it'll scale on that actual point. And then here, I'm just gonna simply split this layer and then just delete that back end. So you can see if we play through that, we've now got what appears to be a muzzle flash sort of coming out the end of the gun. So the next part is we wanna actually add in the beam or the blaster effect itself. So what we actually need to do is right click and create a new solid. And we're just gonna create a white solid here. It doesn't really matter what color it is. Then I can come up to my effects down to video copilot and I'm just gonna add the saber effect. And straight away, you'll see it's gonna pop up with this. The first thing we can do is actually come down to our render settings here and make sure it's composited on transparent. And that's just gonna reveal the background. Now, saber is actually a really great plugin. 
and it's got a bunch of presets that you could actually select straight from here. So if you didn't want to create the typical looking sort of blaster effect, you could create your own sort of unique look just simply by using these preset options. And then you could even just go ahead and change the color to get whatever look you're actually going for. But in this case, I'm actually gonna build and change the settings myself just to give you a better idea of how it's actually done. So I'm gonna start by creating a position for the start of the beam. So I want it to actually start on the beginning of the weapon. Now I'm just gonna make sure I'm lined up with that first frame here, which is that point that it actually fires. Then I can actually position my end point for where I want the beam to actually finish. But what I'm actually gonna do is drag this off screen. There's actually two things we're doing here. The first is we're actually lining up the beam so it follows a straight line coming out of the gun. But the other thing is we're actually setting the path in which the beam can follow when we actually animate it out. So don't worry too much about the actual size of this. We're actually going to shrink this down and readjust this in a minute. I'm just gonna drag this over so we've got the edge of our thing lining up nicely. And the next thing is we wanna actually come down and change the color. So obviously, being an Imperial Stormtrooper, we want it to be a nice sort of red color. So I'm gonna give this a nice sort of red color here. And then we can actually start to adjust the glow intensity. So that's the actual glow of how much glow you actually want to appear around the beam. So I'm just gonna drag this up slightly because I just want a bit more glow here. And then I can adjust the actual glow spread to maybe something around here, maybe to around something around 0.7. And at the moment I'm finding that glow quite intense. So instead of dropping the actual size down because I'm quite happy with how far it's spreading, I just wanna drop this glow bias down to something around that. Now the core size is actually how big do you want that beam to be? And I'm gonna make mine somewhere around sort of seven. I think that looks pretty good there. Okay, now the next little setting here is actually coming down to the customizing of the core. And we can start to do some really interesting things here. For instance, I can create a keyframe for the start and the end offset. And what that's actually doing is it's asking me where do I want the beam to start and where do I want it to actually end. So I can set that first position to maybe something like that, which is the end of my beam. And the other thing I can do here is actually ch change the start roundness, which I can drag all the way up and the end roundness as well. And that's just gonna give it a more pointy sort of edge, make it look a little bit more realistic. And the other thing that makes it a bit more realistic is I can actually change the end size. So as I drag this up, you can see it's actually gonna create more of a perspective as it moves towards the camera. So it's obviously growing in size as it's moving towards the camera because that's what we would expect to actually happen in real life. Now, the other thing I'm not too happy with here is how distinctive this actual white core is. I want this to be a little bit softer. So I can come down here and actually change the core softness to maybe something like that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is just move this behind my muzzle flash layer. And I'm also going to slightly offset that start so it looks like it's really coming out of that gun. Now I can actually start to adjust a few settings here just to try and help sell that actual effect. And I'm just gonna come up here to glow intensity and just mess around with this just by dragging this up slightly. And the other thing I wanna to add to this whole layer, come up to effect down to color correction and add the tint. And what I can actually do is change these two colors to kind of line up with this red. So I'm actually gonna make them both red like this, but I'm going to make the white to maybe something like this. So we just kind of reduce that whiteness in the middle. Now I can also just adjust this down to maybe around 50%. And you can see if I turn that on and off, it's just kind of reduced that intensity of that white in the middle. And I feel that just makes the effect look a little bit better. Now the next part is we just want to move over one frame here and we want to come back to our customized core settings and then start to reanimate these. So we're going to move the end core all the way out and then bring this core up to about here and then move across one frame and just split this layer and delete that end bit. 
So if I play through that, you can see we've now animated that blast effect. Now from here, there's a few things you can do, which is really just personal preference. Now the first is actually how fast do you want your bullet or your beam to actually travel? And that'll depend on how many frames you actually wanna animate it for. In this case, we're only using two frames of animation and I feel that that's probably about right for a shot like this. Now that I've actually got my beam set up, I'm just gonna come back here and I can readjust a few of these settings even more. So I might even add more red into that. And I might actually even reduce the core size. Down a little bit again. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now again, that, that's totally up to you on the effect that you actually wanna go for. And you don't even have to do what we've just done here. You can again use one of those presets if you wanted to add in your own sort of unique look. Now at the moment, that's actually looking really good, but it's missing something to really kind of sell this effect even more. And I feel what it's actually missing is a glow effect. So when he actually fires, we should be seeing some sort of reflection in his suit of the actual red sort of beam to make it look a bit more believable. So the way we, we can actually do this is we can take that video clip and I can just simply duplicate it and drag this one all the way to the top. Then I'm just gonna drag the start in so it lines up nicely with the start of my gunfire here. And what I'm going to do is go to my pen tool and I simply just wanna try and separate this into sections. So I'm gonna start by drawing a rough mask which kind of goes around his suit here and his helmet. And then I'm going to draw a separate mask which kind of runs underneath the suit here. Then what I want to do is come up to effect, down to color correction and add the curves. And I'm going to set this to be red. And what we're doing here is we're actually gonna to start to draw out a red S curve on the screen. And that's going to create a red effect which runs over our suit. Now the other thing, if I come down to my mask settings, I'm going to create a feather for both of these. So it sort of softens those edges here. Then I'm also gonna come back up to effect down to color correction and add the hue and saturation. And I'm going to drag the saturation up to maybe something around there just to help bring out that red effect as well. So you can see as I turn this on and off, the effect that we're kind of getting. Now, the other cool thing about this is because I've drawn this in two masks, I can take this bottom mask here, which is this yellow one, and I can actually turn down the mask opacity so it's less intense on the bottom than it is on the top. Then all I simply need to do is select that layer, hit T on the keyboard and create a opacity keyframe at the very start. I can move across one frame, maybe just drop this down to maybe about 55% and then move across and split this layer again and delete the back part of that. So all we're doing there is because the glow should be really intense at the start because we've got the muzzle flash and we've got the bullet sort of and the beam coming out, we want the glow to be more intense. And then as it moves across, that intensity sort of drops slightly. So now if we play through that, you can see we've got that glow effect appearing on the suit as he's actually firing. So that's how easy it is to actually create this effect. The next part of this is actually just repeating this effect. So now that you've done all the hard work, all you need to do is find where the next effect lines up and then just simply duplicate those layers and just move them all across. Then you can just reposition them so it lines up with that gun and you've got that same effect playing out. The other thing I can do is duplicate this layer again here and I don't want to move that across, what I'm actually gonna do is, is extend this across and just hit U on the keyboard to bring up those opacity keyframes, then drag those across so it lines up with the start of the next muzzle flash and then drag this layer across. And the reason you're dragging that across and not moving it across is that that layer should line up with your base layer. 
or your main piece of footage. So you can see I've straight away duplicated that effect in a fraction of that time because I've already done all the hard work. Now from here, it's just a matter of grabbing your other shots and your other angles, readjusting the position of that muzzle flash and the beam to match that angle and then just animate it in exactly the same way and then you're done. So there you go guys, that's how you create the Stormtrooper blast effect inside of After Effects. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more great After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.